Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Tuesday. I hope everybody's doing good today. So this video was brought to my attention by my Telegraph group. One of our members, RG, posted it. And basically, it is about this Kenyan comedian. She came out a few years ago. Her name is Elsa Majimbo. And basically, she's low-key telling what happened between her and Naomi Campbell. If you guys don't remember, she went viral um, back in 2020 for acting like a rich auntie. And, you know, her videos went viral on TikTok. Here goes one of the videos right here. Quarantine videos. Her satirical monologues usually featuring her eating potato crisps, leaning back against a pillow and wearing a pair of tiny 1990 sunglasses as a prop gained immense recognition in early 2021. Her internet fame led her to partnering with luxury brand Valentino in 2021. And by the end of that year, she had received massive endorsements from both Fenty and Mac. And people keep on telling me you haven't participated in Corona challenges, you haven't joined house party, you haven't joined TikTok. It's not by mistake. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> and this and you keep on telling me I miss you. Why? 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 <laughs> Do I pay your school fees? <laughs> Do I pay your rent? <laughs> Do I provide food for you? Why are you missing? All right, that's her. So after her video went viral, she went through a serious glow up. She wanted to get into like modeling and, you know, she was also a comedian as well. And so um, she ended up doing some video with Naomi Campbell. As you guys all know, I'm not a fan of Naomi Campbell. So we're going to, you know, start there. Everybody knows I'm not a fan of hers. So she has a YouTube channel. And even three years ago, her and Naomi Campbell, they did some YouTube videos together. Um, it's been three years and it only has 128,000 views. But she's interviewing her. She's reading off of a paper. It just comes off really weird. But then they do another vlog together where they're grocery shopping and she takes her to Billionaire Island. Y'all can go ahead and watch these clips right here. Hey, I'm with Naomi Campbell. Are you? She's an icon. I'm with Elsa, who is just going to be so cute and she doesn't even really know. Elsa Majimbo, makeup by Naomi Campbell. Pat McGrath Labs. All right, so you guys just saw the clips of her and Naomi Campbell. So I guess, you know, people thought everything was all good between them and her fans hadn't seen any recent, you know, videos or pictures or updates of her and Naomi. And so Elsa decided to spill some tea and um, basically talk about her situation. While she's slathering on copious amounts of shea butter and oil and lotion, I don't know why I was getting kind of disturbed by how much lotion she was putting on, but everybody in Telegraph said that that's what she does. I guess that's part of her stick is that she just puts on a bunch of lotion and shea butter, but I digress. So anyway, she decided to go down memory lane and talk about her situation with Naomi Campbell. So she said that she had heard back then that Naomi Campbell was gonna be in Kenya. So she texts Naomi Campbell on IG and asks if she can meet her. And so Naomi Campbell said, you know, that's cool. You know, low key I'm washed and nobody's checking for me and I do need to, you know, get everybody's mind off of this Jeffrey Epstein's list. So let me go ahead and connect with, you know, the new up and coming TikToker from Kenya. So Naomi Campbell decided to connect with her and, you know, they were both eager to hang out with each other. So Naomi Campbell had her come to an executive resort in Mandili, Kenya, that was owned by her boyfriend at the time, an Italian businessman named Flavio Bittori. Um, so that's where they did the vlog. So then later on that day, um, as they're walking on the beach, Naomi suggests to Elsa that she should make a documentary on her life in Kenya. And so she introduced Elsa to Hollywood folks, a lot of big time Hollywood execs who happened to be there vacationing in Kenya. And so, you know, Elsa hung out with Naomi Campbell and her team. She stayed at a five-star luxury hotel in Nairobi. She was really hanging with this team tough. Then one of Naomi's business partners basically was telling Elsa that Naomi told them that she was behind Elsa's success because we all know videos who get 128,000 views in three years go viral. Girl. So she said she was behind 
behind this girl's success. And, you know, Elsa kind of felt away. So she decided to, you know, set the record straight, explaining how she met Naomi. And so in June of 2021, Naomi celebrated Elsa's 20th birthday. And she made a post on IG, basically, you know, telling her happy birthday and all that good stuff. So people thought, you know, okay, everything's cool. That was in 2021. So then fast forward to March of 2022, Naomi called um, Elsa to inquire that she had heard that Elsa was dropping a short film. And the film was like a 15 minute movie about her experience with colorism, bullying and comedy. And it was directed by Julia Janish. So Naomi felt like Elsa purposely excluded her from the documentary and basically took her idea and ran with it. Because remember in 2020, they were, you know, frolicking on the beach and stuff like that. Naomi was telling her, you know, let's do a documentary. Well, Elsa went and did her own damn documentary in 2022 and did not include Naomi in it. And Naomi definitely felt the way. So Elsa's busy, she's traveling the world, she's hanging out with celebrities, she's doing her thing. And so um, Naomi asked her to give her a call and she wasn't able to return Naomi's call in 24 hours. So she called her, I think, the day after. And then Elsa says that's when things start going bad for her and that Naomi Campbell like really felt the way. She said she sent her apology text messages, she got no response. And then Naomi basically texted her and told her to stop contacting her altogether. Then a few months later, she ran into um, an ex-editor-in-chief of British Vogue. His name is Edward Anyful. That's when Elsa realized the gravity of the situation. So she contacted one of um, Naomi's close friends to kind of facilitate some type of communication between the two of them because she's trying to figure out what happened. Naomi just told her to stop texting her, so she didn't want to text her, but she wanted Naomi's friend to kind of facilitate something. So um, in January 2023, Naomi wished Elsa a happy new year, but never reached out to speak to her. So now we're in the month of February, and it's 2024. It's been a whole year since she's last had any type of contact or communication with Naomi. And so Elsa decided to go on an eight-minute, you know, lotion rant <laughs> and talk about her whole situation with Naomi Campbell, so I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. Talk about Naomi Campbell. Talk about Naomi Campbell. There's no me. Naomi, your mentor. Relax. Relax. I'm here to tell you today what happened. So, um, in December 2021, no, in December of 2020, Naomi was coming to Nairobi to do some shopping. Um, she was on holiday, but on a remote place. So she was in Nairobi doing shopping. And I texted her and she told me she's in Nairobi. So I was so excited to meet her. She was the first celebrity I was ever going to meet. Guys, I was to the roof. She texted me. She texted me. She was like, hey, I'm here. So she texted me the location. I went directly. I went with my brother. So my brother and I, we met her. We did some shopping. And as we're shopping, she's like, oh, you know, the plane that's taking us back actually has a few couple more sets do you and your brother want to join us on holiday hell yes so i so i just i was like oh that would be so that would be so lovely but i texted my dad i said hey get the car ready i'm coming to the house we are going to the airport in an hour to meet naomi campbell so she can take me on vacation so we go on vacation we have like a nice we had like a very nice vacation Naomi took care of me the whole entire time, the whole entire time. We were staying on the beach or doing this and then like this, that, eating, just having fun, you know, what people do on vacation. And this one time we were on the beach, Naomi was like, oh, you know, we should do um, a documentary, a film about you living in Kenya. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. She introduced me to a couple of people um, in Hollywood, it was so lovely. Oh. So a couple of people she was on vacation were well, coming to Nairobi after the vacation. They were staying at the Kempinski. So I went to see them um, at the Kempinski when the whole thing was over. So I went, I sat down with them, I was talking to one of them. And one of them was like, oh, it's so, like, how did you meet Naomi? And I was like, oh, no, I texted her on Instagram, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, yeah, she told us, like, she made you and she built you and she made your career. And I was like, what? No, that's not what happened. She, and I was like, you mean like helped me and like promoted me? And he, she was like, no, like what you have is because of her. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, that didn't happen. It is very important. You remember that part later. OK, so time goes by. Time goes by. March 2022. We have jumped into March 2022. I get a phone call. Um, My phone is ringing. <laughs> Naomi Campbell. Oh, so um, I pick up. I'm like, hey, sis, like, how are you? How are you doing? And she's like, Elsa, how dare you? Oh, <laughs> so I'm in shock, right? I'm in shock. I don't know what's going on. So I had just. So let me tell you what happened. The context of this um, 
phone call. So I had just finished a doc, not just the previous year. I had done a documentary on my life about my life, about bullying, about growing up with colorism, all these things about comedy, where I fell in love with comedy. So, um, um, the film was debuting at Tribeca Film Festival and someone from Tribeca asked Naomi if she was coming and Naomi thought the film was the film she had suggested to me on the beach about me leaving Kenya. So I was like, no, 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 that's not what it's about. I tried explaining to her and then she was like, I'll sue you for the right of this movie and you know I'll win, right? So I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm telling you, this is not, it's not about that. So I tell her, let me call you tomorrow. And she, she asked me like, why didn't you tell me when I told you at the beach? And I was like, you're Naomi Campbell. You know, like I was starstruck. Like, I, like, it took me very long to, like, process that moment. But, and I was like, I'll call you tomorrow. So the next day I had a flight. The flight I was taking from Botswana to Ghana, where I met that guy, actually. That's the time I was taking that flight. So I was supposed to call her the next day, but it was a 22-hour flight. And in Ethiopia, there was no service. So I couldn't call her. So I called her the day after. Immediately, I landed in Ghana. So she's the first person I called. I'm like, hey, um, hey, blah, blah. Like, are you free to talk? And she tells me, you were supposed to call me tomorrow. You, you were supposed to call me yesterday. You didn't call me yesterday, which she was very right about. And she said, I have the Met Gala. And she was like, this is the last time I'm speaking to you. Have a nice life. And she hung up, which I was like, I was very saddened by the situation. Right. But I was like, if that's how she truly feels, because I respect people's um, space. So I was like, if that's how she truly feels, fine, it's OK. So I let it go. So uh, after that, like a few months, things started going very badly for me. Things started going haywire. And I didn't, I didn't think it was, I thought it was because of the situation. Let me not lie. But I was like, you know, also it can be sure. So I was like, let me go. Because also having someone like Naomi Campbell not liking you in the industry is not a good thing. So I went to her. I apologized. I apologized. I already apologized when the situation had happened. But I went and apologized again and again. I tried calling her. I tried texting her. And then one day she just texted me and she was like, stop stop trying to stop calling me i have a child to take care of so after that i just said okay there's nothing i can do about it i started drinking that's why i even quit alcohol i started drinking um i became i started drinking a lot a lot a lot yeah and then because i wasn't sure why things were going so wrong and i couldn't put my finger on it and then a few months later i met edward Enifo at a party and edward Enifo is one of oh my goodness he's one of the people i adore the most so i was like oh my goodness that's edward i have to go say hi so i go i say i'm like hey edward i'm such a big fan and he looks at me he looks at me He's like, I know you. And then he said something that made me think the situation with Naomi was causing like some of the trials and tribulations I was currently going through. So I was like, you know what? I need to fix this. So I went to one of our mutual friends and I was like, hey, please, can you um, tell Naomi? Because I knew they were going on holiday together. So I was like, hey, can you please tell Naomi to text me? And she was like, yeah, I'll make sure and blah, blah. So a couple of days went by and then Naomi finally texted me and she was like, yeah, I let that go a long time ago. I'm not one to hold a grudge. She sent me a very lovely text. She said, happy new year. So after that, after that happened, this was new year 2023. So after that happened, every single step I made, every single move I made, I told Naomi every single thing I did. I told Naomi I would <laughs> breathe. I tell Naomi whether she would reply or not. I would send her a message because I didn't want what happened to happen again. And after some time, after a few weeks, I called my mom and I was like, this isn't normal. This doesn't feel healthy. It feels... It kind of feels, you know, it doesn't feel too nice. It, it, there's nothing healthy or normal about this. And I was like, I don't want to be in a situation like this. So after that, I just decided it is healthier for me to completely remove myself from the situation and get myself out. And you remember earlier when I said my friends said um, the the ones Naomi had introduced me to when they said, oh, Naomi had made you. you remember when I said that? So I want to, I just want to um, acknowledge that and say that even through, through all this, right, even through everything that happened, first of all, number one, obviously I played a part in it because I am part of the story. Every, in any situation you are in, you play a part, you play a role. And I had my role 
and I apologize for my role. And something else, when she said she made me, I'm not going to speak on that, but I will say that Naomi did give me a lot of credibility, especially when I first entered the industry. She gave me a lot of credibility. And that's not something that I can just say, oh, you know, this happened and Naomi, I can't say that. She did hold hold me up high and she introduced me to a lot of people. She made me feel special. She did a lot of things for me. So I wouldn't say she made me, but she did play um, a big role in a lot of the things that I did in that space during that time. So yeah, me and her, we're not friends. We're not enemies. We're not anything, just not really in association. So we're just strangers. All right, so you guys just watched that video. And so basically she posted that on February 18th and then she deleted it. And so a lot of people really worried like, oh my God, did Naomi Campbell make her delete it? Where's her video? And so she came back online and she said this, talking about Naomi Campbell's situation was very hard and scary for me, but I don't want to be owned by someone else. And I also want to acknowledge that a lot of big hits and blows in my career came from another black woman and not my own incompetence. Then somebody says to her, baby, we saw in your demeanor in that video that this is a sensitive topic for you. Then she replies back and she says, from 19 years old too, she made me an alcoholic and full blown depressed. It's now time to heal and be happy. Then she says, Naomi obviously never force fed me alcohol. The situation led to that action, my actions. As I said, my part was played and the responsibility is mine. Then she says, I stand by my words, content in my decision. The tweets are deleted due to seeking peace, not fear. Y'all need to understand this is something that happened since I was 19. My goal is now happiness. Then somebody else says, don't be scared, Elsa. Tell us, did she harass you into deleting those tweets? Please reply quickly. We don't have all day. We have to attend other people's business that have nothing to do with us. <laughs> she replies back. She says, LOL, no. She threatened to sue and post screenshots of the time. I asked her to help me with some older white execs that were trying to sleep with me. I'm now moving on and leaving it in the past. Then somebody says, this seems deeper than we thought. She replies back. She says, it's very deep. I'm not speaking because I'm brave sometimes. And when you're pushed to the edge, you have no option but to jump. Then somebody says, what can we do to support you? How do you need us to show up for you? And she says, just listen, I've dealt with it alone for years. I feel like a weight has been lifted off of me. So that is what is going on with this situation. Um, her video was kind of long, you know, and convoluted. You know me. I, I don't have a lot of patience. Get to the point. Spill the tea. But um, the part that really sticks out to me in all of this is the fact that once again, we got old white execs tied to Naomi Campbell um, that were trying to sleep with a young girl who at the time was 19. This is not a good look, Naomi, okay? First of all, I'm still side on you for being on that list, being on that plane. And then let's also not forget this, okay? Virginia Gouffet has kept her damn foot on Naomi Campbell's neck since 2020. So it's very interesting that Naomi was still up to her old tricks, you know, with these older white executives around the same time that Virginia was blasting her. If you guys remember, this tweet went viral around 2020. And it says, you saw me at your parties. You saw me in Epstein's home. You saw me on the plane. You saw me get my hair cut. You saw me on the streets. You watched me be abused. You saw me. Hashtag awareness, hashtag justice, hashtag Jaslaine Maxwell, hashtag Jeffrey Epstein, Hashtag Naomi Campbell, hashtag Prince Andrew, okay? And so she also goes on to say this three years later. Um, somebody says, it's no surprise that all these people were complicit in the abuse and trafficking of girls and women. We have hashtag Maggie Oliver in the UK fighting for the same justice. Rochdale grooming gang were allowed to prowl the streets. Police and social workers knew, but turned a blind eye. So Virginia replied back, this was a year ago. She says, trust me when I say authorities who need to know what happened and who was involved already knew. It's amazing how money can permeate silence. So I think Elsa opened up a big can of worms. I know she's trying to delete tweets and distance herself, but girl, you done spilled some tea. And this is why I always say everything glitters is not gold. And why I don't care about this whole celebrity lifestyle and, you know, people always think it's it's OK until it happens to them. Naomi Campbell's name has been, you know, murmured in all types of circles on the people that she's dealt with, the things that she's involved with. 
But, you know, Elsa being young and starry eyed still reached out to her. So I hope people look at this as a learning lesson. I think she went through some shit because how you go from being a comedian, having a good old funky time, living your best life to them being a full blown alcoholic. Like what happened? You know, something happened. And the fact that she said that about rich white execs trying to sleep with her. Basically, again, I'm getting pimping this young girl. They see she wants to be a celebrity, you know, a famous influencer. Um, they're promising her that they'll probably film her documentary and they're promising her the world, but all they really want is to, you know, just get some cooch and pimp her out. So I'm glad she woke up, you know what I'm saying? And got the hell away from Naomi Campbell. But this whole story is a hot damn mess. Um, like I said, y'all feel free to leave a comment down below. Y'all go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know y'all's thoughts on this entire crazy situation, honey, concerning Elsa, um, basically blasting Naomi Campbell. How do y'all feel about this? Do you feel like Elsa is just clout chasing and she's, you know, upset because her career didn't go where she wanted it to go? Or do you feel like, you know, something happened? Um, people are kind of mixed on social media. Some people feel like, you know, she's ungrateful. Um, how dare she, you know, try and lie on Naomi? Um, somebody says that there's one thing I dislike about this in Domi generation is that they can be very ungrateful. Just the fact that you introduce her to your connections, yet here we are today, Queen of Oil would rather play victim, okay? So a lot of people are going to Naomi Campbell's page and they're saying, Naomi did help you, give her her flowers, don't worship her, God also helped you. So a lot of people are going back to these videos after the confession and they're saying, you know, Naomi has a good heart and, you know, Elsa is wrong for not being grateful and for trying to blast her. So I don't know. Like I said, it's mixed on social media. I don't watch her, so I don't know if people, um, if she has, you know, haters or trolls. You know, I, I just don't know. But um, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Bye.